Yes, uh, students, can you tell me what the poem Amanda is about? Is it about parents' problems or it's about children's problems? Yes, it's about the children's uh, reaction to this uh, situation. Yes, uh, absolutely correct. And how they respond to it. So do you think this imagination, Amanda imagines herself to be a mermaid, to be an orphan, to be Rapunzel. Do you think it is a way of, uh, you know, like uh, getting away from this uh, situation? Yes, so she just imagines herself. She goes away from reality, okay? And uh, how is her rebellion or, you know, like uh, when she does all this, you know, like when you are in your imaginary world and you're thinking about, uh, you know, uh, flying or you're thinking about uh, just uh, drifting away in the waters and uh, water being in a tower, Right. So do you think you are going to listen to what is happening around you? Or are you going to be happy in your little world of imagination? Yes. Are you going to be aware of your surroundings? Or you'll be busy in your imaginary world? Yes. So do you think, right? So when she is imagining herself to be a mermaid, an orphan, Rapunzel, do you think Amanda would be listening to her mother? At the time, how would she appear to her mother? No, not at all. She's not listening to her mother. Absolutely correct. So how would she appear to her mother? It would appear as she's ignoring her mother. And you ignore your parents. Then what happens? Are they going to stop... Uh, Telling you, don't do this and don't do that. Or they're going to carry on. They scold more. <laughs> okay, they're going to scold more. So, right. So, do you think Amanda is in a difficult situation again? She's again in a difficult situation? Yes. So, she is there imagining herself. And as she imagines herself, what does she appear to be doing? Like you are there, you're doing your work on your desk, you're writing something. And, you know, like the, like the, you start thinking and dreaming and imagining. Then what will happen? What will happen? What will you look uh, to your parents? What? You're doing something or you're sitting idle? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? That you're being very active, you're doing a lot of work, you're sitting idle, they don't know that you're busy in your imagination, you're dreaming so much, and you're thinking about a ways to escape, right, this uh, problem. But what is going to happen? What is going to happen? You're going to get what? More scolding? Yeah, so it's going to be a very, very difficult. Her parents will have an opportunity to teach her a lesson. Okay, so they, the, as it is, she's learning so many lessons. So more lessons are going to be taught to her. So poor thing, she's caught in a very difficult situation. And again and again, her mother is going to tell her, why are you not doing this? And why are you not doing this? And why are you not doing that? Isn't it? So it's going to be a little big problem for who? Amanda. Okay. So let's uh, continue. Yes. Yeah, so this is such a, what a, you can say, your uh, personal experience is coming handy while understanding this poem. So that is why I always say this is a poem that all teenagers, right, uh, youngsters, they definitely relate to. We will uh, empathize with uh, Amanda. What is empathy? What is empathy? Can anybody tell me? So empathy is you understand the pain or the problem of the person. So definitely you are empathetic towards Amanda's situation because yes, we understand because we have also undergone similar experiences. Okay, so let's come to the poem. Let's have a look. Yes, to understand feelings of others. That is empathy. Very good. Very nice. And you people are very empathetic towards Amanda. And who do you think I would be empathetic to? Who would I empathize with? Amanda or the parent? Amanda or the parent? Amanda or the parent? 
parents okay right so good now you understand what empathy is yes 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 uh, I, i might understand amanda also why she wants to escape but uh, yes uh, right uh, i would uh, empathize with the parents more isn't it okay yes so here poor little girl she's finding a way of escape but uh, does she get appreciated for that does she get a break from her scoldings no she does not get a break from her naggings and scolding in fact she gets to listen more okay don't by now we're going to understand the poem we were in the la on the last stanza let's do this one first then we'll come to the i am rapunzel i have not a care life in attar is tranquil and rare i certainly never let down my bright hair i am rapunzel who is rapunzel yes who is rapunzel it is amanda is rapunzel okay yes so amanda is now rapunzel what does she imagine herself to be she imagines herself to be rapunzel what is the device used here it is a metaphor i have discussed it yesterday also so she is assuming herself to be that yes very nice harshit yes so it is who is rapunzel yes so rapunzel did you read about rapunzel yesterday so she it is a fairy tale character rapunzel and she was put in a tower by her which right and uh, she kept her there in the tower and uh, so rapunzel had very long hair and when she wanted to enter the tower and which would ask her to let down her long golden hair right and yes so she is there in the tower and she says i want to be there i have not a care what's care no worries no problems what are the problems that amanda faces in the real world what are the problems that she faces yes the problem of her parents nagging and constantly telling her what to do and what not to do life in a tower is tranquil and rare tranquil peaceful yes rare naturally not everybody can uh, find uh, yes uh, her nobody uh, you know like it's very rare to find yourself in such a situation where the one which rapunzel had i'll certainly never let down my bright hair why wouldn't she let her hair down because she wanted to be completely alone right so she did not if she let her hair down who would come yes the witch would come and in the tower and would be with her she would not be alone anymore but she did not want any kind of company and least of all any human company so she wanted to be alone she wanted to enjoy her peace she wanted that freedom okay right stop that sulking at once amanda you're always so moody amanda anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda stop that sulking at once amanda what is sulking what is sulking what happens after you get a scolding you feel happy you feel brave right you make a face you ignore others what do you do you're silent and bad tempered very correct very correct so sulking stop that sulking at once amanda mother is telling uh, amanda right that why why are you also like that right i if i have uh, given you a scolding if i'm telling you what to do it is for your benefit only isn't it right but look at you making that face and you're not uh, talking and you're ignoring so that is what you're sulking when you're with a very bad mood and you are very silent and you don't want to respond to anybody isn't it right you're always so moody amanda yes look at you you are there right always in your own uh, moods there you are anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda nagged means what is nagged what did i tell you what is nagging to constantly giving orders to someone right anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda 
What is so ironic about this line? Anybody? What is ironic about this line? Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. What's the irony here? Is it true or is it false? Yes, she was nagging her. And the irony is that she is nagging her and what is mother saying? That anybody would think I was nag nagging you, okay, right? So it is ironical here, mother is nagging her and she does not believe that she is doing it, okay? Right, yes, so here, what is this poem about? It is about Amanda. She's a young girl and she's been constantly told by her mother what things to do, what things not to do, okay? Right, so here, don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. Don't, don't. What do we call this is, um, device where the first word in the line is repeated? Come on, let me check your memory. I'm not giving you options. Tell me without that. What is it? What do we say? Jasleen has joined the class. Harshita is there. It is not alliteration, but Jay, it is not alliteration. First word of a line, when it is repeated, we call it anaphora. Very good for those of you who gave the correct answer. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Instructions, orders, nagging. Mother is telling her what to do and what not to do, right? So don't, don't. Repetition of the first word in consecutive lines. What is it called? It is called anaphora. A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. -A -A. Write it on your books if you have to. <coughs> yes, write it on your books, please. Now look at this line. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. Now tell me what is this? Stop that slouching and sit up straight. What is it? Is it alliteration? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. It is here. It is the repetition of that sound. The starting. It is here. Yeah. Some of you might say it is assonance also. But we'll uh, talk, let us talk about the initial repetition sound here. So stop that slouching and sit up straight. And of course, it's a perfect example of uh, alliteration. And uh, yes, when in doubt, we write alliteration. It is your favorite poetic device. Absolutely. Okay. Now let's come to the next stanza. There's a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me. A mermaid drifting blissfully. What is the device here? Is me a mermaid? Who's the mermaid? Amanda. What does she imagine herself to be? She imagines herself to be a mermaid. What do we call that? It's a metaphor here. Okay. And yes, yeah, so there's this slowly flowing emerald sea. Emerald, it's a what? It's a green color right a bright green here and so the color of the sea that means the water is very clear very bright and yes so very softly she's just drifting on the water soul inhabitant what is soul soul means one only inhabitant inhabitant the person there who is there me who is me amanda and what is Amanda here? She's a mermaid. And what is she doing? She's just drifting on the waters, drifting, just being taken along with the waves, right? Blissfully, happiness. So Amanda's happy? Yes. So she's happy as a mermaid? Yes? Imagery is there throughout. You know, look, there is imagery over here. We imagine uh, that uh, scene. Imagery is there throughout. Okay, 
imagery is they're definitely there so there is that sea there's a green sea and there's a mermaid and the drifting there who's that mermaid it's amanda there's perfectly imagery right but when i talk about here what is it who's the mermaid here amanda is the mermaid isn't it right and who is amanda in the poem who is amanda in the poem she's the young girl in the poem and what is happening to her she's getting scolded she's uh, being told continuously what not to do and how to sit how to behave right things that are good for her things that are bad for her, okay but what has happened to amanda in this stanza she has become a mermaid is amanda happy yes she is so when i talk about the your yes, stanzas which are in the brackets or the parentheses they are the ones where amanda is imagining herself and in these places amanda finds what peace freedom happiness right she wants to be alone and she thinks i'm happy there okay right yes so please note this down on your books as we continue did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda once again did you did did what is it you know it we've done it okay did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda so many instructions right and of course poor little thing here does she do what her mother asks her to do no does she get up and finish her homework no does she get up and tidy her room no what does she do what does amanda do she goes off in her imagination i am an orphan who's an orphan here amanda yes and an orphan is a child without parents right so she's gone to such an extreme situation and she's fantasizing about that and fantasizing right she thinks that being an orphan is something very nice that uh, i won't have parents telling me what to do and what not to do but in reality it is not a nice situation when you are alone no one to take care of you it is not but in her imagination she wants to be alone and she's gone to the extent of thinking herself to be alone and where her parents will not bother her where her parents will not tell her what to do again and again throughout the day okay roaming the street roaming without any aim without any purpose just walking i pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet right here she's asked to clean her shoes she's asked to tidy her room but what is she's doing what she's walking in the dust with my hushed bare feet they're not making any noise because the bear is not wearing shoes and she's walking in the dust and yes her feet are becoming what dirty she does not mind it she is doing exactly the opposite of what her mother is asking her to do the silence is golden the freedom is sweet so she is enjoying those moments of happiness she is enjoying those moments of silence because there will be no one around telling her what to do and what not to do okay right any doubts till here right any doubts here no one has any doubts that's very good clear yes okay fine now let's see yes now let's continue don't eat that chocolate amanda remember your acne amanda will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you amanda right so who's the speaker here mother parent right okay don't eat that chocolate how old do you think amanda is what do you think about amanda how old is she she has to do her homework and uh, she is she doesn't keep her room tidy she does not uh, clean her shoes and she is not supposed to eat chocolate she is getting acne and uh, generally you know what is the age when you get uh, acne yeah a teenager right yes so, so we are talking about yes yes so remember your acne amanda i don't eat chocolate what will happen right you have uh, these pimples and uh, on your skin it's not good for you will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you amanda why is amanda looking at her mother what has happened to amanda what is she doing what is amanda doing amanda is lost in her dreams isn't it now where has amanda gone now i am rapunzel 
I have not a care. What is she not worried about? What will she not bother? Do you think, uh, yes, so she's not worried about her acne and uh, she's not uh, worried uh, about, uh, you know, taking care of a room or anything. So life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I certainly never let down my bright hair because she does not want anybody to be there with her in the tower. She wants to enjoy her silence, her solitude, right? Her isolation from the rest of the world. Okay, right. So I have not a care. What is she not worried about? All the worldly things, right? Cleaning her room and keeping her shoes away, doing her homework, not uh, eating chocolate, all these things that she's not bothered about. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. And now I will, yes, because she is busy in her imagination. Very good. Okay, so she's not listening, right? Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So here, once again, it is metaphor. Okay, right? Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. Yes, so here it is. Yes, your alliteration once again. And of course, when you took up, talk about the last line, there's big irony over here that mother thinks that she's uh, not at all nagging and she's not at all giving her instructions. But in reality, she is. Okay. So yes, so these things that you can talk about. Fine. Now let's just come to the questions here quickly. How old do you think Amanda is? Right, so you discussed it, right? So you remember your acne. So she's there, a teenager. Yes, so roughly of uh, your age, maybe. And how do you know this? Yes, so in the last answer that we have read. What is sulking? We have discussed sulking. When you get a scolding from your parents or when you've done something wrong, how, how do you behave? Right? How, how do you make them realize your uh, importance? Okay, that you did something wrong by scolding me. Yes. What what is it? Yes. So right. So sulking it is there when you are silent, you are ignoring your family members, and uh, you are not uh, you know like what uh, behaving appropriately or maybe not uh, listening to them. You're kind of ignoring them in your own way. Okay. I, I don't care what you people are doing. You've been very mean to me, isn't it? So what is sulking? You are ignoring others. You're silent. And uh, yes, and it happens uh, when you have uh, had an unpleasant uh, experience, right? It could be, yes, you've got a scolding. Maybe you've had a, what, a, a kind of an argument with your friend, right? And you want, okay, mujhe notice karo, mujhe manao aake, that way. Fine. So that is what your sulking, right? So who do you think is speaking to her? Who is uh, the speaker here? Who is uh, speaking to Amanda? Yes, who is speaking to Amanda? Mother is speaking to Amanda. Parents, right? Why are stanzas two, four, and six given in parentheses? I've discussed that because this is not. These are not the words of the speaker. This is the imagination of Amanda. Right, so she is lost in her own world, and this is her response to what mother asks her to do. So, right, so when she asks her to clean the room, to remove her shoes, or finish her homework, she just goes lost in her imagination. Now, do you think this speaker is listening to the speaker in these stanzas? Is she listening? If she had been listening, would she have been nagged so much? So, do you think she's listening? What do you say? Is she listening? No, she's not listening, right? So she's ignoring and because she's lost in her own imagination, she is lost in her dream world. What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? So she'll be relaxed and drifting silently, slowly on the water, far away from the world and it's problems okay do you think it is such a big problem or teenagers think that they have the biggest problems in the world right do you think it is such a big problem what mother has asked amanda to do yes so if she were a mermaid she would be away alone 
and uh, she would uh, be there uh, silently relaxing in the water koi kaam nahi karna padta that is what we think you know okay how nice these people don't have to do any kind of work that is why we want to be them isn't it is the mat an orphan is she an orphan no she is not why does she say so because she wants to be alone she wants her solitude she wants to be isolated that is why she says so and she wants to experience it how life would be without the constant nagging of parents without parents telling her what to do and what not to do yes so it is an escape from the reality do you know the story of rapunzel we had discussed it yesterday why does she want to be rapunzel because what what is there about rapunzel where was rapunzel natar away from the rest of the world so she wants to be that so rapunzel was there away right at the isolation and that is what amanda is seeking what does a girl yearn for what does this poem tell you about amanda yes what does a girl yearn, yearn means longing what is she longing for peace happiness freedom isolation and what does this tell us about amanda what kind of a girl is amanda she is very imaginative right and uh, how, how what is her response to a situation what is her response to the situation yes does she deal with the problem on hand or does she just uh, escape from it now let's be real okay fine yeah, what does it tell us about amanda she is quite uh, what imaginative yes she lives in her own dream world and she escapes from the problems of life by going off into her world of imagination and a world of fantasy isn't it right so that means she is not listening to her parents she is not aware of what her mother is telling her again and again and that is why her mother is constantly nagging her okay now do you think amanda is sulking and moody do you think amanda is like that yes do you think amanda is like that but she appears to be isn't it because amanda is there constantly living in her yes 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 so right uh, she is living in her world of dreams she is not doing the things that she is supposed to do little things right in her room the house and that is why she is getting a constant scolding yes and uh, right so she is there uh, why does she appear to be moody why does she appear to be moody because where is she she is lost in her own world of fantasy her own world of imagination so how does she appear to mother it appears as if she is ignoring her she is not listening to her and she may be you know just lying on her bed or sitting on her table and just you know okay staring outside the window and uh, busy in her dreams okay right and when you appear to be dreamy when you appear to be sitting idle and uh, not doing anything do you think that is a time when you are a perfect target to be scolded yes yeah that is the most uh, appropriate time to get a uh, scolding when you're sitting there doing nothing right so how can you be free why are you not doing uh, something you're supposed to be doing that isn't it so that is what the parents go on and on okay right so with this we have come to an end uh, to this poem i'll be sharing with you the stanza based questions okay right Yes any doubts any questions anyone